Welcome. This presentation will provide an overview of the East Lake Road Corridor Analysis and Alternatives Development Study. The project is located in Northeast Pinellas County. East Lake Road, also known as County Road 611, is a principal north-south arterial road. The project corridor traverses through Palm Harbor and Tarpon Springs and the communities of East Lake. The scope of this corridor analysis and alternatives development study includes examining existing conditions of the corridor, evaluating needs and deficiencies of the roadway, and developing concepts for potential future improvements. The project limits extend from south of Curlew Road to north of Trinity Boulevard, a distance of 9.3 miles. The study began with an evaluation of the existing conditions. East Lake Road is primarily a four-lane divided road with five-foot paved shoulders. This typical section varies in the southern portion of the corridor. The posted speed limit is 45 miles per hour south of Curlew Road and 50 miles per hour between Curlew Road and Trinity Boulevard. Twelve signalized intersections and seven bridges are located within the project corridor. Five-foot wide sidewalks are located along the east side of the roadway from East Lake Road Business to north of Trinity Boulevard. Sidewalks continue south along the east side of East Lake Road Business to Tampa Road and along the west side of the study corridor from Tampa Road to Curlew Road. The Pinellas Trail, a 15-foot wide multi-use path, runs along the west side of East Lake Road from John Chestnut Park to Keystone Road. Pinellas County is currently constructing the Pinellas Trail North Loop segment along the west side of East Lake Road from Tampa Road to the existing trail at John Chestnut Park. Construction is anticipated to be complete in 2022. The East Lake Road corridor is primarily residential with more than 30 housing communities within the project limits. East Lake Road also provides access to the county's John Chestnut Park and multiple golf courses and sporting complexes. PSTA bus service is limited to a small section of the study corridor from Curly Road to Tampa Road. This segment is served by Route 62 and 812. East Lake Shuttle extends bus service to the East Lake area, not served by PSTA fixed routes. Six schools are located within the study limits, and approximately 30 school buses travel daily along the study corridor. East Lake Road serves as a primary link to major east-west corridors such as Keystone Road, Tampa Road, Curlew Road, and State Road 580, and provides access to the southern portion of the county and St. Pete Clearwater International Airport. Once the Gateway project near the St. Pete Clearwater International Airport is completed, this corridor will provide a direct link to Interstate 275. East Lake Road is also a designated hurricane evacuation route. During the data collection portion of the study, it was found that the traffic volume along East Lake Road varies from 41,000 to 62,000 vehicles per day, which indicates the need for widening. The Florida Department of Transportation planning level capacity of a four-lane non-state signalized arterial roadway is 35,820 vehicles per day. Current traffic volumes exceed the capacity of this four-lane roadway indicating the need for additional lanes. An examination of traffic accidents over a five-year period showed that 1,727 crashes occurred between 2016 and 2022, which resulted in 10 fatalities. 21 crashes involved bicyclists or pedestrians. The predominant crash type was rear-end crashes, which typically indicates a congested corridor. Combined, these findings indicate that the corridor does not have the capacity necessary to safely and adequately serve the traffic demand. An intersection analysis indicated 
that most of the intersections within the project corridor fail to operate at an acceptable level of service during one or both of the a.m. and p.m. peak traffic periods. According to Pinellas County's level of service standards, facilities operating at level of service E or F during peak hours are considered deficient. Level of service D is considered to be acceptable within the study corridor. An analysis of existing traffic operations showed that eight intersections within the project corridor do not meet an acceptable level of operation. These intersections include Curlew Road, Tampa Road, Sandy Point Road and Tarpon Woods Boulevard, Ridgemore Boulevard and Village Center Drive, Landsbrook Parkway and Cypress Woods Boulevard, Ridgeline Boulevard and Pine Ridge Boulevard, Keystone Road and Crescent Oaks Boulevard. A safety analysis identified six locations within the corridor with more than 100 crashes over the last five years. These high crash locations are Keystone Road, Curlew Road, Trinity Boulevard, Ridgemore Boulevard and Village Center Drive, Sandy Point Road and Tarpon Woods Boulevard, and Woodlands Boulevard and Boot Ranch Boulevard. The study identified the need to provide both capacity and operational improvements to reduce intersection delays and improve safety. The following slides discuss potential improvements to address these needs. Widening the roadway from two to three lanes in each direction is needed to accommodate both current and future traffic volumes. If capacity improvements are considered, they would likely include three 12-foot travel lanes in each direction, separated by a 16-foot raised median. The sidewalk and multi-use trail would be maintained throughout the corridor. The original design of East Lake Road made the provision for widening to occur primarily within the existing median, minimizing the need to acquire additional right-of-way and reducing impacts to existing features such as sidewalks and multi-use paths. Capacity improvements could also include widening the Tampa Road Lake Tarpon Canal bridges to accommodate three 12-foot lanes. Intersection types including conventional signalized intersections, innovative intersections, and various interchange designs were evaluated for each intersection within the project corridor using a traffic analysis tool developed by the Federal Highway Administration. This tool evaluated how well each type affected traffic flow through the intersection. The analysis showed that more than one type of improvement worked well at the same intersection. A displaced left turn, or DLT, is an innovative intersection that moves left turns away from the intersection to reduce conflicts and improve signal timing. Vehicles turning left cross the opposing lanes at a signal-controlled intersection and then travel on a new roadway adjacent to the opposing lanes. Left-turning vehicles are able to make the left turn at the same time as vehicles travel through the main intersection. Benefits of a DLT include improved intersection capacity, improved signal operation, and fewer conflict points reducing the potential for crashes. A restricted crossing U-turn, or R-cut, restricts left turns from side streets and directs vehicles to make a U-turn at a median opening further away from the main intersection. Vehicles on the side street can only turn right. Vehicles on the main roadway can continue straight, turn left, or turn right at the intersection. Benefits of an R-cut include improved traffic flow through intersections, improved signal operation, and fewer conflict points, which improve safety. A median U-turn, or MUT intersection, removes all left turns at the intersection. Vehicles continue through the intersection and make a U-turn at a median opening away from the main intersection. Benefits of an MUT are improved intersection capacity and safety, reduced signal timing by reducing the number of traffic movements at the intersection, and fewer conflict points improving safety.
An overpass-underpass, also called an interchange, is a system of interconnecting roadways with one or more grade separations, allowing traffic to move between two or more roadways on different levels. An overpass-underpass provides the greatest efficiency, safety, and capacity for two intersecting roadways. This configuration can be a useful solution to improve many intersection conditions by alleviating congestion and reducing crash frequency and severity. The cost to construct an overpass underpass is substantially higher than the construction cost for an at-grade intersection. Costs vary widely depending on the type and size. A single point urban interchange, as pictured, can cost more than $20 million. Construction of an overpass underpass also requires more right-of-way. Potential locations for an overpass underpass along the project corridor include Curlew Road and Keystone Road. As shown in this table, intersection types that provided good traffic flow are highlighted in green. Those that provided poor traffic flow are highlighted in yellow and those that provided unacceptable traffic flow are highlighted in red. As indicated by the large number of green cells in the table, the analysis showed that a variety of intersection improvements could effectively move traffic through the corridor. Further detailed analysis of potential improvements is needed to determine the best solution to improve safety, traffic flow, and traffic operations throughout the project corridor. Engineering and environmental issues will be considered in future studies, and continued opportunities will be available for community input. Costs were estimated for potential improvements, including widening and construction of innovative intersections. The preliminary cost estimate to widen the entire project corridor to a six-lane divided roadway is approximately $40 million, without intersection improvements. Estimated costs per intersection for intersection improvements are $5 million to $7 million for a displaced left turn, $2 million to $4 million for a restricted crossing U-turn, $2 million to $4 million for a median U-turn, and $15 million to $20 million for an overpass underpass. Efforts to inform the community about the project and provide opportunity for input include establishment of a project website and mail-outs to stakeholders. Virtual and in-person meetings are intended to present findings of the corridor analysis. To provide comments or ask questions, you can call or email the county's project manager. Following tonight's meeting, the study team will review and consider all public comments and finalize the corridor analysis project. The county will initiate detailed studies to further evaluate options for improvements at major intersections. Future studies will also consider land use and community character, assess potential environmental impacts, investigate funding opportunities, and evaluate how to best divide the long corridor into manageable design and construction segments. Design and construction segments and schedules will be developed upon completion of the detailed studies. An in-person meeting is scheduled for June 1st at East Lake High School as a follow-up to this virtual meeting. Display boards will be presented at this in-person meeting. Updates will be provided on the project website and opportunities for community input will continue through future phases of this project. This concludes the presentation. Thank you for your interest in this important study.